Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the last day of the StarCraft 2 Chalmers Championship. Uh, today is the day of the Grand Finals. My name is Flex, and with me today I have Jock. Hello, Jock. Hello, thanks for having me again for the final, no nonetheless. Yes, it's going to be a great match today. Uh, let's take a closer look at today's matchup. We're going to uh, see a best of seven between Yoman and Sianit. Uh, Terran versus Zerg, Civil Engineering versus Physics. Uh, both players are very highly ranked. We are Grandmaster level territory here, Jock. So I'm very much looking forward to the match today. What are you feeling? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> this this may be the closest series we will have in all the tournaments, maybe. As uh, at least MMR wise, I would say that this player are the closest, and uh, also just because they are so high on MMR, they usually don't perform. Uh, uh, they, they usually don't uh, underperform as much as maybe a uh, more novice player would. Yeah, now you're right. Uh, we are definitely looking forward to it. The players are ready, and we're loading into the first map of this best of seven. We're gonna start playing on Death Aura. We're gonna jump into it any second. Oh, we have representing civil engineering. It is your man. Woo! Woo and in the bottom right corner, we have uh, Cianit representing the physics division. Yo! Yay! Yo! So uh, let's see what's happening already. We have a uh, normal. Expansion from uh, the third player, Hatch Gas Pool, and from the Terran, a uh, Rax Gas and then CC on the low ground, so very standard opening so far. It's not it can be. Yes. Uh, do you think. Uh, let's ask this question. How many uh, proxy Raxes or games do you think <laughs> we'll see tonight? One? Well, there two? Is, there is at least four each game, so that would be. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, at least on this game. Uh, I would definitely try to do something. If if I were your man, I, I would do something, uh, at least one game. But uh, we are seeing that um, Zenit has uh, taken the longer path with his second Overlord, just maybe to check for that uh, proxy rack. So I think he is so aware that that's a very real possibility here. Yeah, uh, he did similar in the semi-finals as well, Zenit, that he, did, he, did, he never drone scouts, but he sends the... Uh, second overlord to scout for proxies it takes a detour so he seems yeah. to continue in doing that so um if your man wants to make uh, barracks proxy in them then he needs to uh, take it into account where the second overlord will go the reaper okay. almost got the drone there yes very close very good by seeing it no drone lost no circling lost so there's not a single unit lost yet um, we have uh, pulling ga Pulling drones off the gas on the Zerg player after getting the Zerg speed, so we're probably going to see a third base any second. Are we going to do that as well? Yes. And on the Terran okay. side, we're seeing reactor factor into starport. Very standard opening locks. Yeah. And the the, the drone from Sienna was able to sneak out when the Reaper was away. Otherwise, that could sometimes be a problem for the Zerg to take his third base if he yeah. if he does if he doesn't do it before the first Reaper arrives. But he was managed to sneak it sneak it out there, so that's definitely a small win here. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, okay, so yeah, we could go into the main. Did he see? He did not see the base, so he does not know if there's an early lair or not. It's a very mineral-heavy macro opening, uh, as we can see. But Yoman is perhaps not aware of that yet. Uh, Serling speed finishes up, and he's going to ch chase away the Reaper. Yes, I think he's even gonna get the kill in that Reaper. It's, it's not the whole world, but uh, I, I always think it's nice to have the Reaper together with the aliens. Yeah. It, it's almost like a one-two punch when you're shooting at creep turners. You get first the Hellion shot and then the Reaper comes in to finish the turner. It's yeah. a fa faster attacker. Yeah. For those of you uh, in the chat uh, who are perhaps not super experienced, getting rid of these creep tumors from the uh, from the Zerg here is very very important because slowing the creep spread really makes a big difference when it comes to later fights. So these early uh, Hellions and the Reaper is mostly just for denying the creep spread and perhaps poking in and getting some drones if possible. But usually that's not something you're expecting. 
Okay, we're seeing a Reaper, and uh, no, I say a Banshee with Cloak here, Drock. Uh, interesting play here. Uh, it's going to get yeah. scouted though. By the Overlord. We also don't see any barracks with tech slabs. Tech slabs. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a mech play here or uh, if we really need to get the tech out earlier. And uh, people in the chat, please let us know if our audio levels are balanced and so on. We're keeping an eye on the chat. There is a delay to the stream, but please let us know. And uh, thanks for the uh, spam helping our internet. Okay, we're having the Helions here. They they take a glimpse into the base, seeing that there are very few drones, so they decide not to die, which is good. Because if, you l if the Terran loses these Helions, then the creep spread can just grow infinitely uh, for a very long period of time. Okay, first two Banshees are out, they're gonna fly across an Overlord here, and they have been spotted since before, so they're not... Are they gonna go around the Overlord? But um, do you think these two Banshees are gonna, gonna do uh, uh, too lot? Uh, I don't think they're expected to do very much. I just think um, these Banshees' main jobs are probably... Oh, they're gonna scout, scout this fire, so that's nice. But I think these uh, Banshees' primary role is to remove creeps and maybe delay potential expansions. Yeah, will they snipe the spy before it's done? No, the Overseer gets there. Oh, they can uh, transfuse, yeah, the Queens can heal the building when it's fully built, so really close but no cigar. I very much like there that while the Banshees were drawing attention, killing, uh, attacking the Spire, the Hellions tried to poke at the third base, but the Senate was very good using his Surlings to defend there. So, uh, good play from both players, and they're, they're both quite even, I would say, in the workers, because Yeoman is going to land his three, uh, third base right now. Good play from both players. Though with only four Hellions alive here, uh, Yeoman is definitely risking the sh risking losing map control here. Yeah, you're right. Um, Steam is going to finish up soon and the first two medevacs, so maybe he's going to try and get back my previous with tho those. But the Mutalisks are out. Do you think the Mutalisks are going to go do a lot? Yeoman mm, should be prepared as he scouted them quite early. has a turret in his second base here. But these engineering base seem very exposed, they're quite far away from that turret, so those uh, are quite uh, prime targets for the mutalisks. Yeah, but if they will be able to get them, there's there's a lot of, lot of uh, it's a lot of, a big win there, but uh, they're also quite tanky buildings. Yeah, so you see the mutalisks going... Oh. And they have the possibility to repair the engineering base as well, so I would say they're all pretty hard target to get. We're seeing uh, Dimitris go all the long way around to try and hit the uh, third base here. We see more turrets going up, but the uh, Mutalisks are able to deny them. Already yeah, four <laughs> workers lost. Uh, yeah, this is definitely annoying. Also yeah. uh, forcing Yeoman to put his worker back in production to finish those supply depots as well. Yeah. We're seeing uh, more widow mine production coming up here. Uh, I personally, as a Zerg player, don't really like making moon utilisks just because widow mines are so powerful against them. So um, let's see if your man uh, also builds many of them to try and keep them back. The widow mines, their splash damage is very useful both against the mutilisks in the air and the surrounding bailings on the ground. Yeah, I almost feel like Terran and Zerg players have a lot of hate relationship to, to, to widow mines. The Terran players is always complaining they're hitting their own army, while the Zerg yeah. players is complaining that their army vanishes. Yeah, I'm not sure about the game design there that the Widow Mines become such a game warping unit, so to say, that both players are like, oh, it's, it's the Widow Mines' fault that the game was won or lost. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're seeing a move out here from the Terran, and perhaps going to want to poke up at the fourth base here that Zenith has taken. There's only one tank, but we're starting to see more of the Widow Mines here in production as well, even a Thor. On the other side, we have many, many Banelings here, which are the, the key units in uh, defending against these types of attack. Yeah, I think your man has uh, done a great job containing Zenith there. He's, he has not let this economy totally spiral out of control, so I think that he's in a good position here. Yeah. But this, this attack here will decide a lot of how the game goes, and a lot of those Banelings got connections there, so... Yeoman is forced back and it's never get good to be tuned back as a Terran player because it's very momentum based. If you lose your army out on the map, usually the circle can't attack. Yeah, and the mutilisks here being able to uh, kill many of the fleeing medevacs. Meanwhile, there are five workers lost here. At the same time, we have Zerglings running into the natural, so... Uh, 
The shoe is on the other foot now. Seeing it is really trying to push in and try to make da uh, big damage happen before Yoma gets to recruit more units. Yeah, a nice save on the Torda and lift up with the Nether back and drop it. A little neat micro trick you can do as a Terran player to try to extend that force life. Yeah. For the people in the chat talking about the clap bot, the clap bot should still be working, you can test it out, but there's a 90 second delay to the game, so you will hear it 90 seconds later. Okay, Mutalisk are now poking in, but now we can see that the Widow Mine defense is too strong, so the Mutalisk are not in a big enough number to be able to comfortably go in and snipe them off. So he's able to keep his SCVs alive in his third base, but he's probably going to want to take that fourth base any second, and as I mentioned it, he does. Ooh, one Sterling immediately finds out and gets to work on that worker as well. Yeah, very good very play from nice Sienit being on top of that. In the upgrade though, we're seeing a plus two, plus two timing here from Yeoman with this attack, and uh, Sienit's upgrades are uh, only halfway done. But Yeoman has not started 3-3, I want to see those started in as soon as possible as well. Attempt number two coming up here, push yep. the four base. Very nice lift of the Marines. Very nice lift. With quite a few Banes by the bus there. The mute that count is very high. Yeah, very, very high. Very high. Oh. Very... Oh, we are counter-attack at the same time. Losing 15 workers. Oh no. So, uh, yeah, it looks like some type of binding attack here. Meanwhile, the fourth base is being attacked, and there is even a surge in the natural. CNT is yeah. attacking everywhere. I don't see Yoma winning this game if he has to restart his third base. He really need to keep that one alive. Yes. But in, in doing so, this Mutalisk will have a field day on the other side of his base, which is in his third base. Yeah. See, and it will be able to pull him back and forth. Oh, the Bane is coming in. This is... No. Um, this is not looking good for our civil engineer player. There's lots of units here left over, and they're possibly going to have to snipe the base. Yeah, the, this uh, is very hard to recover from. Yeah, in the armor supply, we see 20 versus 70, so there's a big difference. We see a desperate scan here on the fourth base, just seeing how far behind he is, maybe. And uh, this might be the uh, beginning of the end, so to say. In the yeah. income tab, we see an extreme lead to the third player. Many I thousand. Think Sinit got a good read on this game. He, he didn't run up to the 80 workers he would like as a serve on four bases. He instead stayed at 60 and was able to really counter Janman's push there. So I think he got a great read on what's happening there. Yeah. And that is the first point on the scoreboard. 1-0 lead to Sinit. Wow. Clap in the chat. Claps in the chat. Okay. So that was on Death Aura. Let's see if our civil engineer can uh, take it back. We're gonna see what type of max map we're gonna play on next. It would be Romantic side, interesting. Uh, we are playing with a loser's pick format. So the loser of each game gets to pick the next one. And this is Yoman's choice. What do you think about Romantic side for this matchup? Uh, I think... Um Romantic side is, uh, at least according to me, it's an interesting choice to pick as a Terran player. I would go for something like Submarine instead, but uh, I don't know if he has, has any special special plan that he's going to utilize on Romantic side or what his motivation is. But uh, at least I think this this map is probably probably better for Serge in my opinion. But uh, yeah. Uh, also, I give the young man the benefit of the doubt. I think he's he's a better player than me, so I'm I'm not sure what he's uh, aiming at here. No problem. Have you accepted the uh, game invite here to the lobby? Yes, it's entering lobby. It says I also got a text message saying that uh, I was a little bit low volume. I don't know if that's anything. Oh yeah, can I will turn you up. Oh, you can turn me up. Nice. Yeah, I'm turning up. Uh, try right clicking on me and joining again because inviting you didn't seem to work. Okay. Okay, so we're getting the next game ready for you as soon as everyone is in the lobby. Uh, I can't join you for some reason. I you can't join me option. if you right click and. Ah, yes. Uh, I don't have the option for some reason. I'm not sure why. Hmm. I, I can see you sending me, inviting me to lobby somehow, but. but 
Ah, I'm stealing entering lobby. Maybe I my game is maybe crashed or something. I have the entering lobby. I'm trying to restart. Okay, restart. restart. Yeah. Okay, yeah, restart soccer fast. Okay, this is going to take uh, less than a minute, so we we don't have to cut to a break for your viewers. Okay, so people in the chat, can we get some cheering here? Uh, who are people uh, hyping for? We're seeing some electro representation in the chat. Yay! I'm sure Jock is happy about that. Uh, but yeah, when it comes to the uh, civil engineering versus physics division, uh, how do, what do everyone think about that? Okay, there we go. Yes, I'm in a little bit. Great. Game loading in. Wow, now we're seeing the clap from the chat here now. So uh, people are... Uh, the game was, was over there. You can see the delay now. Okay. So... I, I figured... I maybe figured out why your man picked this map. Maybe he picked it because this is uh, the second worst of, of uh, Cynic maps in his uh, ladder history. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, you, people are allowed, or the, the data of your matchups on different maps are available in the Stark of Client, so being able to scout your opponent in that way is very, very interesting. Okay, let's jump into the game. In the top left corner of Romantic side, he's down 1 0. He's representing civil engineering and the color blue, it is. Yo, man! Wow. Wow. Oh. And in the bottom right, we have the beast from the physics division, Sinit! Wow! Clap, 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 clap. Okay, so are we seeing anything ch cheeky so far? No, it doesn't look like it. No, oh, pretty bread and butter here. Yeah. yeah, we're going to see a, a hatch first. Do, do, would you hatch first like Sinit does uh, the entire the entire uh, tournament, the entire match, I'd say? Or are you too afraid mm -hmm. eventually for a barracks proxy I would, I would probably do it until it doesn't work so he has a 1-0 lead now he hatched first that game so maybe do it again and, p and put the pressure on, on John man in, in that case to, sh to show him that he not that he can't do it yeah um, I would say keep doing it as, as long as it works now we can see the second overlord scout pattern so he's, he, he would miss if, if there would have been a proxy outside his natural on the low ground next to the nice logo here then uh, he would have missed it, and uh, that is quite risky. Uh, not uh, scouting a proxy is very, good. very bad. Okay, and we're seeing the same type of opening, barracks, refinery, and command center on the low ground. So this is going to be a very standard game like last game it appears like, so far. Yes, do you think we will have Banshee again? I'm not sure the Banshees pulled their weight the last game. Um. If he wants to, he should. He, I'll expect him to try to fend off overlords more. He had a few marines, but they were all in the natural. Um, so the overlord going into the main there, scouting the the banshee tech, was able to do so very freely. Uh, so I'm not expecting a, a a banshee just straight up in the main without perhaps putting it a little bit further back and having marines to pick off an overlord. Having said mm -hmm. that, there's no overlords currently going to the back of the main. Uh, which is usually a position to be able to s go and look at the, the ramps, the ramp. So he's only going to have the Overlord at the natural and then a third at the third. Okay. Meanwhile, we have a Reaper here. Will he get a Surling? <laughs> yes, a good <laughs> question. Will the Reaper actually get anything? I'm thinking no this game. No, I don't think he got anything last game either, and uh, not even a tumor actually. And getting the first tumor is quite nice because any second now that queen will want to drop a tumor, and being able to snipe it off and drop a uh, drop a bomb will be there. There it goes. Can he snipe it? He goes for it. Oh, so no. so close, so close. A little bit too late. Maybe, yeah. maybe half a second too late. Grenade. Yeah, like th that first tumor is much important, much more important than what you think, because it connects to the third base uh, much quicker than if you would have lost it. Uh, what do you think about the third base on the low ground? Uh, yeah, I would say it's, uh, it's, it's. I think it's pretty common on this map to do this for Zerg players. Uh, the third base could be taken on the high ground, which initially can feel safer. But um, if you look on top of the of the potential third base, there is these minerals you can hide tanks behind and stuff like that. Yeah. So. If the Terran player has prepared something around that, it can be tricky to hold that place. Definitely. 
Uh, okay, where is. very open on the low ground, so. Okay. Uh, except for the rocks, there is really no super great way to hide the tanks away. Yeah, you're right. Okay, we're having the first uh, Hellion poke here. Gonna see the third base and see that there's no drones there. Uh, Serving south for the defense. We're seeing a Roach Warren here. Uh, I'm not sure if we got the Roach Warren this time in the last game. Do you think it's going to be for aggression or defense? Uh, hmm, I'm not sure. It's making seven of Seven Roaches in production. I guess that answers our question that this is a push coming up. And nine, yeah, so it's going to be a very, um, very heavy Roach attack. Yes, there is not a lot of uh, units from Gunman here. One Liberator will go over the map. I guess it's very critical for Yonman to get to know this as fast as possible, so at least the li Liberator can return home. Yeah, he defend. sees the five roaches now with its Hellions, and he should feel like this is perhaps more than just for a defense, because he was able to say it defended with only Surgeons last game, and he even sees a Ravager morphing there, I believe. Yeah, uh, three bunkers coming down. Yeah, that's good. Uh, to his second base. I guess if he can finish his third base, he can just lift it up. So it might work out for him, but there is so so little units here to hold it. Roach push. Liberator harassing the natural of the Zerg. Yeah, only Hellions are not good versus Roaches. Yeah, it's one tank on the high ground. He needs to be really careful with that tank. If it gets knocked down the Ravager, this game is peace over. Yeah. Oh, Zerglings are going up for oh, the tank. Oh, Zerglings are really going for it. And then the siege tank blocks the depot. And uh, the Ravagers? Ooh! Actually survives, but the Lynx finishes it off. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think this is unfortunately a surprise for a young man here. Yeah. And uh, a, a great great mix up from uh, Sienna. Yeah, he first off Doing played uh, much more macro. I waited for a, a, a failed attack by Yeoman and then a counter attack and one. And here is the progressive play style of a very designated uh, launch attack. I, I actually, I actually think I'm starting to get uh, CNN's way of thinking here because when I was facing CN as well, I picked the uh, submarine versus him. Map they have uh, haven't played this season, and also probably the worst map uh, for him this matchup. And then also he's played uh, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more unconventional. Yeah. I think there's a high chance he would pull out those tactics when he gets on a map he's uncomfortable on. Yeah. And do you think that the um, base on the low ground was for this roach attack? Because putting the base there means that your roaches will get to the opponent's base just ever so slightly quicker. Uh, because mm -hmm. at, at least on some maps, when you make the uh, the, the old uh, queen roach attack, I see the, uh, the, the more offensive third base taken. Uh, but maybe that's just uh, with that specific attack. Yeah, it's a possibility, I'm not sure. Okay, so in the income right now, we have a very large lead for the third player. We have 44 work workers versus 11. There are terror news, but Yeoman identifies it as not enough when he sees the amount of workers on the second base. GD! GD! Two zeros so far. Yes. I wonder what map is coming up now. Maybe I should uh, <laughs> check check out Cyanit's uh, most played maps. Cyanit also banned uh, Oxide and Lightshade, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe one of those. We'll see. Has I think been... Oxide was uh, actually Cyanit's best map. But really? Uh, anyway, yeah. Hmm. Okay, we're going to Pillars. Oops, Pillars of Gold. Pillars of Gold. Pretty map. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna invite you now, see if it works. Yes. Yeah. Maybe it didn't work because I made you a spectator immediately after inviting you. Maybe that crashed it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it was probably because I alt tabbed uh, my game there. That's also possible. Yeah, after you Let's get the players in here. Okay, so it's a 2-0 so far. Let's hope uh, it's not a 4-0. Uh, let's see if our civil engineer can make some builds happen. Uh, do, you, do you think... What, what, okay, what's the percentage chance of your man proxyraxing? Of, the, of next domain? This game and pillars. Yeah. Hmm. I, think, I think it's... 
I think it's pretty low, at least if you have paid attention to uh, the Overlord scouting pattern of uh, seeing it. I think this map will be hard to proxy map. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking you might you be right. You have to go for something like real wild, almost placing them in the middle, or slightly off the right, because the first Overlord will travel the fastest way, but yeah. the second will almost always hover over the third base to check out the proxy location there so far. Yeah, yeah, you're right. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, the <laughs> game is loading up for you now, so let's jump right into it. Mm. In the bottom, uh, top right corner of Pillars of Gold, he's down 2-0, and he needs support in the chat. Do we have some blue names? It is your man. And in the bottom right, from the physics division, looking to make your man's life as hard as possible, we have seen it. Wow. And okay. uh, there is a proxy coming up. Yes. But it's not a marine proxy. I f you, you, it's definitely a marine proxy. Yeah, no gas. Yeah. And uh, it, it was on this map that seen it. He, he had this exact same first overlord, but he was proxied by barracks that was just within the range of the Overlord, like right next to this uh, pillar-looking thing. But now Yoma yeah. knows about it and puts his barracks a little bit further away instead. Yeah, I remember I got insta-busted versus seeing it on this map for placing my barracks way too close. Oh, it was you who played it? Yeah, because you, you, yeah. were you the one who put the barracks like right... Oh no! The second Overlord! Yeah, the second Overlord's gonna be very close and oh, it sees it. But... Uh, with the barracks this far away, it can actually be quite tricky for the Zerg for how to react because pulling pulling the drones, uh, it's almost too far of a distance. It's it's not in time, and yeah. uh, you lose mining time as well. So I think uh, CNE2 is the right decision here to only send one, maybe two drones over. He's going for the Reapers actually. Yeah. And you noticed earlier as well that CNE actually took a drone and scouted around the, the third base on the low ground. So he was even safe from that angle as well. So with these two overlords and his drone, he was able to cover his entire like triangle of the map. So he he, he was very aware this game of a proxy. It's hard to proxy on this map, I would say. Yeah. He even checked the very far, um, yeah. the very far uh, bottom right. Yeah. But this is not an all-in from Yoma. He has uh, continued to build SLS and command center at home. So this is uh, some kind of pressure here. Bunker in the main Bunker. base. Yeah. It's going to get uh, scouted there. Oh, oh, oh. oh, 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 oh no, Reaper surrounded. Surround. Very, very important there. Yeah, I think the first bunker is, I think the bunker is to be able to hide away the Reapers if they chase body wings. They can come in and out. Yeah, it's complete drone pull. See, and it takes no chances here. Yeah. With the first creep down, I have a very hard time seeing this working out. Yeah, and he has... At home, there is no factory or second command center, so it's still very dedicated. Yeah, it's pretty oh, dedicated, oh. but um, they are pretty close in work, is at least. That as soon as this pressure is over, uh, CNN will press the drone button. Yeah. Probably pop up by 10 or so. And now there's no high ground vision anymore, so it's going to be very hard for the Reapers to jump into the main. How is what? the production? Are there more links in production? Yeah, even many, many more. So the Reapers need to get across the map and and defend because they can easily get uh, surrounded and taken out. And then there's nothing back. I at actually home think this is a little bit of risk uh, for Sienna to build this many links. Maybe he thinks Yoman is way more all in than he actually is. Because... Or do you think it's just defensively? You don't think he's gonna try and counterattack? Yeah, maybe he's going to counterattack, but. Um... I think that's un un at least a little bit unnecessary, I think. I think he should take the lead he had and run with it. But he's probably underestimating how, how all in John man is. Ooh. First Reaper that got lost for a long time. So that, that was the second Reaper right there. So the other ones, have, they lost the first one quite quickly, but he has been able to keep the other ones alive for a long time. Yeah. And he, he moved, the, fa the factory was off place in his own wall, uh, but he fixed it now. That could have perhaps been important later. Uh, we have some nice hype in the chat. Force here confirmed? I don't think so. <laughs> and I like the Pillars of uh, Pillars of Goldmasters. I like that name. Goldmasters is the name of the clan that actually both these two players are part of. 
Um, in the Winters interview, Sienit, uh, we asked Sienit uh, in the semifinals whether or not he has practiced a lot with his clan partner Yoman. If he haven't actually, it's going to be interesting to see uh, that that they haven't practiced and see what type of secret builds they will have. Okay, the Reapers actually, they've been able to do a lot. I'm very yeah. surprised. You know, putting the putting two or three queens like next to the um, close against the wall right here, jumping up spot means that it's basically no physical spot to be able to jump up. But he's been able to jump up and really damage these queens and keep the links at home. But uh, after that potential initial overreaction, I'm not sure if it was an overreaction or not, but potentially, uh, Zenith has has been able to press the drone button and uh, the worker difference is is uh, really starting to grow now. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. Um, Zenith has come uh, winning out of his opening gambit, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't see him killing Yoma uh, with just any drone. Yeah, like this, this attack right there, we, except for that spine, there's really nothing here. Can he just go and kill all the drones? Ooh. This is very important for Yoma right here. We, we talked about overreacting, but I think he underreacted after a while. He, he only made links and then stopped. And oh, he yeah. snipes the spire. Oh, the spire got cancelled as well there. That's actually not true. Can he keep this alive? If he kills the links, get yeah, the drones approved. This is very, very important. Get hyped in the chat. Yeah, this, ay, is, ay. Uh, this is the comeback in action right here. When, when the, now when you have both Reapers and Hellions, and there is only Surgeons to come through. Yeah. Like there's, there's no army units here. In the units tab, there's two queens. One queen. Two units in production, but with five or six reapers, they can start pretty fast. We really need to surround them to be able to. Yeah, this is GG here. This yeah, there's is, uh, no drones. This is Yoman taking GG! Wow, what a game! That was very nice. That is something I definitely have to look up what that build was. <laughs> yes, the uh, w winning with the proxy eventually build. Yeah. Like the, the doing, Hellions doing, there definitely made a difference. I'm doing the shields, but I'm also doing the base. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're, uh, this is going to be Sienit's first map choice this uh, match. And he chose it Jaganata quickly, so maybe he has some uh, special builds there, do you think? I think I think Jaganata is almost the obvious pick for Elmin Zerg players. It's it's the map that has the by far longest run, running distance. I, I would even go so far to say that this is probably one of the most Zerg most Zerg favorite map we have ever had in the map pool. <laughs> I would what? say. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you're you're saying that the uh, it has a very, very high chance of winning the next game you're saying? Uh, yeah, I would definitely say he's uh, favorite on this map, but uh, I, I don't think that's enough to call it in any way. Like, young man can definitely make something happen here, but uh, I totally understand his decision with yeah. picking Jaganata instantly. Yeah, we'll see. So it's currently 2-1 now, as you can see on the splash screen, and it's going to be very hyped now as we move into game number four. This is this is a very, very important map because being 2-2 two, two or being 3-1 is a very, very different uh, point in a match like this. Yeah. Okay, the match is loading in. Let's jump into it. In the top right position uh, of Jaganata, he is representing blue and he's not down 3-0, he's down only 2-1. He got the game map on the score and it is Yoman. Boom, boom. And in the bottom right from the physics division, we have Zenit looking to find that SCV moving across the map. <laughs> oh, yeah, it worked last game. Let's see if it works out this time. Let's give yeah. him the score. It's three SVs pulled this game, so I think it's even one more. Yeah, and there's not yet any gases, so we uh... This is the proxy barrack. The, the, the pure proxy barrack, not the Reaper compromise. I like this the memes how... in the... Oh, sorry. This is how real men play Tyran. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get yeah, those yeah. proxy racks out here. Sure. Yeah, like uh, proxy three racks, no gas. This is uh, much more comedic because you won't have enough minerals to like, get a base behind it or something like that. So, and uh, you can see the overlord scouting patterns here. The second overlord will pass straightly across it. 
but it's going to be quite slow. I like the memes in the chat. Spam this fax to help Joe Man's proxy racks. <laughs> <laughs> Good memes. Thank you, chat. Uh, I'm not sure how many viewers do we have right now. We have almost 50 live viewers, and there's okay. good action in the chat. Wow, clap, clap, clap. Now let's see knows because yeah. we saw the SD coming from there. Yeah, he and now he gets the, the full confirmation. He sees, will he see all three Raxes? Yes, he even sees all three Raxes. Bunkers yeah. in the natural, will we see drone pool? Oh, oh, yeah, indecisiveness. Trying to, trying to stack the drones, but uh, it failed for him. Yeah, and now maybe will the first bunker get up? The first marine is there. This is very important. Yeah, I think uh, it might be too late here. I think this bunker is going up. Yeah, and there's backup SCV, so even if he snipes the first one. And then we have a... This is... Is this the comeback? Is this the 2-2 move? Will we see proxy raxes for the rest of the tournament? It's not clear yet, but... Uh, I'm not sure what to do as a third now. I, I think a spine is in order, but I'm not sure. Mm. What do you think about moving up there? He went. No, not this round. Not this round of the marines. This is critical that the marines survive. So. Uh, he lost one only, but he went very deep into the main there. Very surprised. He can uh, snipe this base, bunker up, and then take his own man natural. Maybe he was checking for this, if the spine crawler was in production. Sometimes they build it in the main. Yeah. Instead. Yeah, you're right. Putting a lot of bunkers up. Oh, do and you... that concrete rage at the hatchery as well. This is looking very good for young man. Yeah. If you get this contain, snipe the natural, would you? continue holding in more marines or do you think uh, trying to transition out of it is a good idea? Nah, after this it's definitely a transition time. Um, the roaches will come out and the ravagers will eventually clear out these bunkers, but I think the damage definitely is done here. Yeah. See, and it didn't have a drone out on the map as well, so there is no chance of a third base here. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, you're right. Uh, having a drone sneaking out very early can lead to a secret third base. That's very good. He even gets the defensive spine here on one base, so he's going to want to move it up so soon with tumors. Now Which we're seeing double spine. gases from the Terran and moving back his gra moving back his Rax and getting a second base. He he fails the wall again. Do you see the supply deep wall here on your man's side? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a, a bit sporadic, but uh... yes, uh, this is not the f this is not the first time we've seen this in this uh, match. So uh, maybe it's a common mistake that he does. Oh, that overlord was just trying to sneak onto the high grounds. Actually, killed and supply blocks in it as well. So there is more bad news for seeing it coming up. Yeah, and he's own he has four roaches, and yes, he said he wants to make them into ravagers and start sniping these bunkers. Do you think? Do you think there is a window where the Ravagers of Sienit will be able to pressure your man at home? Hmm, possibly. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But I think that's what Sienit is going for, because otherwise I don't see him coming out of this, because... I think I think this is going to be a Nidus play. Oh, no, no, he doesn't have a... I'm not sure what this is going to be at all. It's a very late expansion, at least. Yeah. He sacks one Rax to make a full scout. He sees that there's there's no like possibility of a Nidus network, there's no lair. It's, he sees the two guys and the uh, Roach Warren. He sees the four Ravagers killing his bunker, so he should be ready. He has a bunker yeah, at home and a lot of he's Marines. He's getting a Marauder. He's getting a tech level on the factory, so maybe a tank, but it won't be done in time. Maybe a Cyclone as well, or a Roller. Ling speed will be finishing up close enough for this attack. Will we see the uh, depots getting raised here? I think those marines are on the depot. Ooh, those marines need marine. to get moved. Now he moves them good. Yeah, so see and it's... Now, but, uh, I guess he needs to do something with his money because he won't have enough lava on one base to continue this push anyway. This is a creating home, a little bit preemptively maybe. Maybe I saw the two bunkers and decided that that was way too much, I'm not sure. Yeah, but I, th I think it's better to make two bunkers here than to make one too few. You can, since you can uh, like uh, salvage them later if you need to. Yeah, yeah definitely from John man. I was thinking maybe CN should have tried to push up there. I'm not sure if that was his best chance here, but uh, from it's this hard. position... Uh, Losing that overlord that you mentioned earlier is so such a big deal because having that overlord means you can start ravaging biling the high ground But without that overlord that were killed earlier You need to sacrifice units running up to get vision and that's mm. not very uh, sustainable 
Yeah, that was probably why he backed away. Yeah. I was forgetting that I have vision of everything here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's easy to forget when you're uh, observing it. Okay, yeah. so... Your man has now had an income lead for a while, having a s second base uh, up and running. Sienit is going to want to hit that drone button. He's uh, catching up and already slightly in the lead. But he's starting yes. his spire now, and uh, on the other side, steam is already done. Do you think mm. there's going to be a, a hard hit timing soon when the medevacs are out? I'm not sure. There's a third command center coming up as well, so I think your man is... Uh pretty much uh, going to sit back here, but uh, I think he definitely will move out with his first medevax, but I think it will be pretty non committal to be honest. Yeah, you're right, and he goes double bunker on the low ground as well, and he still has the one on his main. So Yol man, he's, uh, he's a little bit scared here, he's uh, very defensive in his po posture. Yeah, I think he you knows he's far ahead, so he tries to play a bit extra safe, just to not throw this game away by being unnecessarily greedy. Yeah. I think it's definitely the right play from Janman here. He's playing very confidently. Confident, uh, confidently. <laughs> yeah, confidently. Yeah, I, I very much like that he sent an injured marine ahead and then sent his medevac behind it so that the injured marine could scout if there's an overlord and also that base position. So now there's a medevac swooshing into the main base and he's going to potentially see the spire timing now, which is also very important because I don't think he's scouted it now. Where is this guy? Oh, it's placed yeah. on the ground. It's the same spire position scene it has made uh, in many of the games, uh, in the main base near the ramp. Yeah, I think it's pretty smart, I think. It can probably dodge most of the base scans as well. If you're just yeah. scanning the base, you just leave, you will you not find the spire. Yeah. Usually you see this type of position as well in the middle, uh, Protoss, Protoss versus Zerg, because it's hard to scout with an overlord coming in the back or coming in the front, because it's like in the middle of your two bases. Mm. Okay, so uh, the game is now seem to be slowing down for at least for a second until the mute risks are out. We have uh, upgrades are already starting by the Terran player and he's landing his third base, very important. On the other yeah, side, the mute risks right. will pop any second. Uh, yeah, the first, so first one's already out. Double metal left outside his third base. I think this could actually do some real damage here. Yeah, yeah. can he snipe the base? Uh, there's some bailings here. The bailing speed will be done. There it is. Oh, the nice blitz, ni yeah, very nice game. blitz. There's yeah. a lot of Marie, uh, Serenis left. He's okay. making Sienic pay a lot, lot for that defense. There was actually quite a lot of Bane's kill there. Definitely worth it. Yeah, now the Mute Discs are here, and uh, if the Marines steam, they will be able to pick these Mute Discs off. For those of you who yeah. don't know, Mute Discs are very weak in direct engagement, but their advantage is their speed, so they can go in, attack, and go out uh, more harassment, at least in these low numbers. So he lo loses another mutilisk as well, and the other one is damaged. In the, and in the main base we have turrets being placed to defend. Yeah. No Where update. would you put the advantage bar right now? In the middle or in the favor zone? Like the young man has, played, has, has uh, we kept his advantage here. But the only thing is starting to see that it's troubling is that the creep spread is really starting to come out on the map. But yeah. uh, Maybe if one man continues to push here, we'll get some cleanup on that part. There's 10 seconds left on the Terran upgrades, so uh, it's very important that he waits for those, because they make a big difference. Will we see a scan here to clean the tumors, maybe? Sniping fourth... Oh, no cancel on the fourth base! Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely a little bit flustered this game. He was also losing control of his mutas earlier, so... I think he's feeling that he's playing from behind here. Yeah. So to... The Terran cleans the creep, gets the base, and goes home. Uh, I like this move. Yeah, definitely a win. Containing the Zerg. Yeah. Getting, and getting some of that crucial creep off, off the map as well. Yeah. And the old man is uh, still in an income lead, uh, and he's going to sediment there by killing the fourth base. Uh, he's starting his own fourth base now as well. So, uh, uh, the lead on upgrades are going to end pretty soon, as soon it will hit 1-1 one, one as well. Yeah. Uh, Yoman's secondary upgrades are much earlier though, so he's going to have a window in the future as well. We see three medivacs in the left part of the map. Was that scouted maybe, because the mutilisks are yeah, hunting for it? Rare, it looks like. Oh, oh, oh no, no the mutilisk turns right. around! <laughs> Meanwhile, there's a poke of sieging up around the fourth base. I think that Oak actually provoked the Miritas to maybe leave for a second. This is very... Oh. 
he, he gets the drop off. The, the marines are out. Yes. Meanwhile, and then the other attack can move in. So it's the multi pronged attack here from your man. Very well played. Uh, the the fourth base again. Okay. So even though the main base didn't kill a lot of stuff, being able to pull back the army and kill the fourth base means that this army can even start to attack the third base. Losing this base now is is it's going to be backbreaking. So many tanks here. The Mirkas are basically the only thing that can help defend this. Yeah, there's no marines left though, so this is going to get. Uh, he's leaving the tanks. Meanwhile, there's a small link counterattack that gets easily cleaned up. As long as Yo Man can survive a desperate counterattack now, I think it's going to be hard for him to lose it. He needs to survive for the next one minute. This is very exciting, chat. Yeah, this unit is definitely 100% all in here. He's retaking his third base, but I think it's too late okay. for that. He really okay. needs to make it work here. Yeah. If we look at your man's vision, he sees the Nuzlisks now, but he doesn't know about the ground units outside his third base yet. He's putting some marines, very good. He sees the bane and he's crashing in. Can, he, can we see a marine split? He's, he's trying to split too close to the command center, but he's oh. managing it anyway. Where's the rest of the Terran units? There's a tank over there. SCVs on the bane links. Is There's so many mutilisks. All at this point, I would say. Oh, there's it's not many marines left. No, there's so many mutilisks. He's making nine mut marines at a time. He needs to group them up before sending them in. Yeah, he, he can retreat from this base. He has a fourth base mining. Yes, Perhaps he, yeah, steam in and save the CC. Mutas will find a way into the base instead, jumping on this production that your man def desperately need to be able to spend his money here. Even picking up an Adam or two. Yeah. See, it is making it somehow work here. Yeah, he's, he was able to kill 25 workers and uh, make a lot of few of his own, so the income lead is now evening out. And yeah, the Zerg is getting his third base already done, his fourth base is now building. So the Terran needs to land his own base to be even on bases. I think it's okay to stay even on bases as long as um, we can stabilize here and don't get the Zerg machine up and running. He sees the Mutilisk. Uh, this sensor tower is a uh, little bit yeah, too far out. So the Mutilist count now is definitely uh, starting to pay off. There's so many, a critical number, he can go in and snipe almost whatever. Not the Marine Ball, but any other buildings or things. Yeah, but, but John Man will have a significant upgrade advantage for quite a while here, because the second second for uh, Scenic was delayed there. So they're yeah. almost only half finished right now. So there is a time window here where John Man can really go for some efficient trades. Yeah, you're right. In uh, Terran vs. Zerg, because they're such small units with rapid attack speed, the uh, armor and weapon upgrades that you're seeing now, we're talking about, is very important for you, those listening. Uh, okay, let's see what can happen here. He, since the c creep was cleared up here earlier, your man is able to get very close to the base with his siege tanks and be able to siege up already. That's also so very important with the creep. Young man here, there is there is almost two marines per serving, if you like. There are some bayonets, but are there enough? 11 SVs lost at home in a bayonet counter attack. We'll see. Oh no, no splits on the marines! Well, he salvaged the situation. Same is backing away. Now yeah, he's trying to free split here. Oh! Nice move back to defend the siege tank from the mutas as well. Yeah, I very much like that he split up the Marines there, being able to defend his flank. Very important. He kills yeah, he the third base, and he gets home. Yeah. This is a very good game on our hands, chat. I hope you're excited. Uh, 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 proxy three racks, and now back and forth sniping bases. Oh no, the medivacs! See, is efficient on maybe one and a half base right now, because his main is 100% mined out. Yeah. And his natural is pretty close as well. Yeah, you're right. Good point. And we're seeing a uh, mutilist going up to the fourth base. There is actually a worker advantage from the town player as well here, so... Yeah, he's up in bases, he's up in workers, he's up in upgrades. Plus he definitely a yeah. move here. Otherwise they'll never run away with this game here, because Terran units can definitely trade more cost-efficient than Zerg units. Yeah, at least before uh, bank, like uh, the late-late game where you're seeing hundreds of bailings. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, but then it's more supply efficiency then. Oh no, Serling's getting in, no siege on the tanks, but the Serling's get us out again. Bailings are here. Oh no, 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 no. Is this a... Your money marine still. His blitz, the splits are good, yeah, Moro. Oh, wow, GSL champion split right there. We, and now he has enough marines to get out the mutalisks. He, lo he loses 16 SVs though. Yeah, and, th and these these marines have no HP and the Medivacs are almost dry as well. So I think yeah. Yaman should really back away right now. If you're losing these marines, there's nothing left to defend once he's mutas. I like his uh, like one or two tanks is very good just to splash in because it forces the mut the mutilisk player not to stack them up. Mutilisk mm -hmm. are usually micro that you stack them up very closely and go in and snipe stuff. But oh, you mean the Thor? You mean the Thor? You said tanks. Oh, okay. sorry, I meant the Thor. Yeah, yeah, right, right sorry. Mm -hmm. But the Thor has an AOE attack, meaning that you cannot clump your mutilisk up in the same way. So just one or two changes the way that the server can micro their units. Yeah, and, and the force also has massive anti anti air range, so like it's yeah. hard to poke around around the army because the tour will always outrange you and give you give you a smack for every try. You yeah, you're right. So yeah, I very much like the one or two, and he's able to kept up with his uh, vehicle upgrade as well. He's working on plus three vehicle attack, so that's also very good. But your man is also starting to mine himself dry. He's, uh, he has a lot of extra workers not efficiently mining, which is coming in here. So he's probably going to want to look at the 5th base soon. That's yeah, a good thing with the Zerg losing his bases that much that he has, is that he has a lot of minerals left on them, compared to the Terran. Yeah, I think Yonman must uh, take... I think Yonman should take action here. I don't know, yeah. I just don't like uh, Terran sitting back too much facing Zerg. I think the run bys are eventual to happen when you play that way. Yeah, the but Hive is now started, so... There is a window before Surrey gets to their uh, highest tier of uh, units and upgrades. So the Terran has, from now on, one or two minutes to, to really try to make something happen. And that's what we're seeing right now, we're seeing a push out. Yeah, th this is the opportunity in the game where Terran really wants to end the game. Uh, oh, oh. He doesn't have a lot of medvacs left, he can't lose them like that. No, he definitely don't have any steam, all of those marines as well. Yeah. So this, this medvax will be dry before he gets over there. He knows yeah. that and probably backs away. He now has two extra command centers, he should move them up. He's long distance mining from the fifth base. Um. There's a first run by attempt happening. This is what I'm afraid of for young man, that this run by will eventually be in the game for Senate here. Yeah. Okay, we're seeing a new, uh, another aggression here on the third base. Let's see if his, the pre splits are good. Yeah, He's steaming. It's a very good, but is the DPS enough here? There's still a lot of mutas to be killed. Yeah. And a lot of loot as well. Wow. Is this the... Is this the comeback to a comeback? <laughs> yeah, this is probably like the third comeback this game from CNT. He has been looking really dead sometimes, but uh, now definitely still back in the game here. Yeah, if we look in the income tab, it's 2,000 resources per minute advantage to the Zerg player. It's an extreme advantage. Terran needs to secure his fifth base and start muting that out heavily. And we see plus three upgrades for the Zerg player is starting now. But uh, young man is definitely on the back foot now, and you don't want to be that as a Terran player. You want to like uh, always push pressure on the Zerg, like almost strangling him slowly. Instead of if you if you back away, you really give the Zerg space to breathe here. And uh, when you do that with Zerg, he grows so fast, the uh, spirals out of control almost immediately. Yeah. People in the chat asking about the show match between the casters. I don't know about that. Oh, Mutil is getting caught out here. This fifth base is, is extremely important. Now this is going to help the income and you can see that the 2000 resource advantage is now gone. So uh, Young Man is able to catch up in the economy, but Xenit is going to catch up in the tech level. We're seeing an Altris Cavern, plus three, plus three, Adrenal Glands. It's going to be a big difference in the strength of the Zerg army from now and in a few minutes. Yeah. Okay, also so with the mines in production, I'm not sure that that's the thing you want if you're going to facing ultra risk soon. No. 
We're seeing a positioning here and the banings are rolling in. Oh, oh, oh. oh nice targeting with the Wiedemanns. Manual targeting there from the man. Yeah. Will he get the base? Meanwhile, there's a counter attack. Getting a few workers. He yes, gets the base. And the Zerg is back to only four bases. And it's the same four bases he's had for a long time. So now the income advantage is going to go on the other side. Mutalisks are now running in. So we're back here. And a Wiener mine. Oh, oh. Oh, Wiener mine almost going off. Oh, we have. There's no mining on the Terran third base. Yeah. He needs to re put those SVs. Yeah. <laughs> he has been surviving on one and a half base for so long. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hard. oh, oh hard. lift up. Get out. Eesh. The oh, he, ha he picked up a Marauder, and then when he couldn't fit the Thor, dropped the Marauder, and then both died, both the Marauder and the Thor. So, yeah. poor Marauder there, being dropped, and then your life was in vain. Six base here. Your man is, if this six base gets up, planetary and all the missile turrets, it's going to... It's so, it's so good. This game is so good. Yeah, I'm going to say this for the second time this game, but I think like Zenit has one more push in him here with the Ultras. But <laughs> yes. uh, if that not working out, uh, I think it may, it may be curtains again. But I said that before, and he somehow managed it. So I'm, I'm not uh, don't I, I don't dare to call this game anymore. <laughs> okay. But that's also a testament to how good Zenit is. That even though he was behind from the beginning and he's been behind multiple times, he has been able to come back. But it also yeah, been good really from your man to not die from the counter attacks and the, the counter um attacks. Really resourceful. Oh, 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 a lot of new attacks going on Western Missy Pirates here. Maybe Sanit is feeling that uh, these mutas are not as needed anymore. I see we sacrifice quite a lot here for a few missile turrets. Yeah. Mutalisk are very expensive gas wise, so you don't want to lose them against missile turrets that are only minerals. Okay, we're seeing now a big Terran push here. Ultrisks are out, they have their armor upgrade, and all the Terrans push into a corner. Yes, good corner, but there is a lot of Bailings, however the Ultras has splash damage as well, there is a lot of them. Yeah, I don't think uh, the Terran was ready for these Ultrisks at all. Uh, we're now this going is, to... This is 6 3 3 Ultras, this takes a lot of time to kill for the Terran player. Yeah, he, he's going to perhaps... Do you, want, do you think he's going to go back into tanks? Like, or do you just spam Marauders or Ghost? What do you do against Ultralisks as a Terra? Uh, I, I like Liberator, but uh, there's still a lot of Mutalisks out on the map, so that can be risky as well. Uh, I think uh, going to some Thors can be a great option, because they can actually both fight the uh, Ultras and the uh, Mutas at the same time. Big attack on the yeah. Terran 6th uh, base now. Yeah, trying all to the the nice the here. If that repair will come in, he's gonna pass a few ultras if he really wants this. Yeah, we're seeing good kiting on the top right side, but the base will go down. The, oh. the Terran attack... Oh. Can this ultras retreat home though? The press can never go though. Gets a lot of ultras here, only two left. Yeah, he Maybe loses 13 left. SVs though. Can he, will he lift off? He's gonna take the 6th base at uh, 2 o'clock instead. He's gonna s perhaps snipe his base again. The Zerg yeah, player is basically is. only mining efficiently from the lower right base. Yeah, but the Terran player is pretty dry in Mironas as well. He, he only has the top right, the top left, I would say. Yeah, and there's a lot of idle SVs as well, like on the gases and stuff. So it's very important, like... The bases are starting to dry up so hard that it, there's no bases left. Like, if you look on the east side, there's Terran base and then immediately Zerg base. Mm. Seeing it only on 55 workers. Uh, 66 now. It produced something. Oh, uh, oh no, the, the newest base on the Terran here is open. Oh, oh no. Now it's starting to come out a pretty poor game here. Every unit you count. Yeah, we're seeing Infestors here as well. Uh, they don't have the uh, energy upgrade, but there's at least two of them. Oh, oh, we lose a lot of Mutas here. Oh, two. Only two. Yeah. Yama seems to be aware of this Infestor switch because he instantly researched the uh, uh, Ghost Shot by the Mutas. Yeah, oh, oh, we see a nice pre split here. The Banelings, there's no Banelings left, only Thors. Will we see uh, Kiting now? He gets the base. Not, not enough on the air here. If he gets the base, can he defend at home? There's no planetary at the sixth base. Oh, and no missile turret either. 
50 meters turn out there, we kill all the Zeus there. Yeah, full retreat, I like it. At least leave, I want to lift the bases here as well. We're seeing uh, no bases being retaken, or like the, the left part, no one has enough money to k k take them back again. The CC we will get destroyed. He doesn't have a lot of minerals left here. I think he's actually even poorer than what Zenith is. Yeah. Zenith has been able to stay on so few bases for so long that uh, he ha has quite a lot of minerals left on his uh, bottom right base here. Yeah. What is the income for these players? Uh, currently there's a quite a big, big lead for Zenith. It's possibly gonna change when the left uh, base drops to 10 o'clock. But uh, mm. as I say, that the mutilisks are there to thwart it off while the Zerg player yeah. takes uh, 4 o'clock. These mutas have really paid, 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 paid off this game for uh, yeah. Zenith. It's definitely. probably the reason why it's still alive here. Yeah, the mutilisks uh, definitely. Can we see some kill numbers? One had 7. We really need to win a fight here. We can't take another team up. And it's also very interesting to see the speed zones coming into play. Those uh, big green circles speeds up the units in inside them. But uh, here we go. So much to send it here. Young man is definitely not ready for this army. Oh, he lifts up. Only have not many, too many units left. He lifts up the base as well. Yeah. There's a very small counter attack on the on the right corner of the map, but it's not enough. I'm starting to get really worried here for Yama. Uh, I think he might actually he, 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 let's see any back into this game, even though he seemed like he had a winning position a lot of times. Yeah, we're now seeing ghosts though on the Terran side of the map. Um, maybe they can deal with the ultralisks. In the uh, unit tab, we see there's ah, there's still there's only three ultralisks left though. And those two infestors haven't seen any fight yet. Oof, it's not close to the ghost here, so he's just gonna lose me. Ghost and he takes the fight lead. inside the speed zone, so the Serbian units can close the distance very quickly. Yeah. And there is not, not, not enough left here to defend from Young Man, but Zenit doesn't feel like going for the kill move here. He's not quite sure what's at home. Wow. Well. Yeah, what a game! For uh, one half of a second there, <laughs> quick reaction. <laughs> and now there's another attack with the mutilisks. The mutilisks have been so good, I'm very surprised. My mutilisks are never this good. Yeah, this is uh, the most annoying mutilisks ever. And the attack on the right side, he gets cleaned up and that's GG! That was... <laughs> Such a good game. It must be. Uh, that was nail, uh, nail biter. What did you say? Yeah, that was a nail biter. Yeah, definitely <laughs> nail biter. Um, it must be so tough for Yoman right now because he must have felt that he had a big chance to win that one. Yeah, that it's exhausting to lose uh, a game of that length as well. Yeah. Almost half an hour. That's pretty pretty long for a StarCraft 2 game. Yeah, we'll, uh, if the players uh, want a break, we'll definitely allow it. Uh, we'll see what they say. Uh, so let's see, we're waiting for the next uh, map here. And it's going to be Light Shade. Uh, light Shade, yes. I'm actually a little bit surprised uh, we don't see Submarine here. Really? You think it's uh, yeah. good for Terran? I think it's very good in this matchup, and uh, I also know that it's uh, Zenith's least played map. Oh yeah, right. So uh, I would put a, I would definitely pull out the submarine here, but uh, it seems like uh, Yon Man is avoiding it for some reason. These guys actually know each other quite well, I think, because uh, they have said they've played with each other before. They're in the same clan as well, so... Uh, asking them for a break right now. Let's see what they say, if they're ready to go or not. Yeah. 
Yeah, as you say, they, they have been playing basically non-stop now for more than an hour, and with with such um, with so much honor on the line, then um, uh, it must be tough for them. But uh, both our players seem ready to start now, so we're gonna jump into the next game. No break. Okay, 3-1 now. We're going to be on match point here. It's going to be uh, very, very interesting. Okay. Yeah. I guess if uh, Yonman wins now, there is only Oxide and Submarine to pick for counter picks. Yeah. And then I think Zenith will definitely pick uh, Oxide. I was actually surprised he didn't pick Oxide before, just because it seems to be his best map according to the Starcraft statistics. Yeah. Okay, let's jump into the game. In the top left corner of Lightshade, he played the game of his life, but he's still down 3-1. It is... Whoop, your man. Uh, and in the bottom right, from the physics, physics division, the beast seeing it. Way. So that was uh, quite the game we had uh, before. Let's see if the uh, hype can live up to it, so to say, with uh, another equally as good one. No proxy. No proxy. A proxy here. Uh, yeah, let's see if uh, Janman can bounce back after that game. It definitely felt like he had that game for uh, a few moments there. Definitely in the start, after the successful bunk bunker rush as well. Yeah. Yeah, if I would have been Yeoman right now, I definitely would have feel so, like so demoralized, yeah. be having such a lead, and not getting to the two-two match score instead of falling down one-three. Uh, it must be very tough uh, on him. Let's see what he what he will do. He's, he seems to be playing very standard so far, and in the standard in the first two standard games uh, he lost. So. Um, We'll see how it goes. Yes. But he lost in at least two different ways. So yep. he, did, he, didn't, he didn't face like the same play from Zenith both times at least. Oh, Ooh, that's a very early Ooh. Roach Worm. Early, early Roach Worm. Uh, we're seeing an SV scout. So if this SV scout sees... Oh, he's, he's on, he only scouting the natural and then going home. No, our battery links up. Maybe he's suicide hit into the main. No. Yes. Yeah. It's like he's going to suicide it. He sees the Zerglings, and that was a, quite an early pool. Uh, yeah. And he sees the Roach Worm, full scout, very important for your man. Yeah, I definitely think the Zerglings was a mistake here. Really telling your man to sacrifice that city because he won't make it home either way. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was interesting. Your so. He's still Not gonna make now. roaches here. Uh, seeing it doesn't decide to just like like cancel the idea, and he said he's going to continue going for it. So we're seeing three roaches right now, uh, perhaps turning into ravagers, uh, but it's only making those three. So it's not a super committed attack. Mm. Let's see Great if your man overreacts. He makes one bunker on the low ground, and uh, he is yeah. not taking any other precautions yet. Let's see what he does with his production facilities. Okay, he switches. Do you think he's gonna go Hellions, even though he saw the Roche War? This is not Hellion time, but uh, at least I don't think it's Hellion time. He has a Starport as well, so Banshees will come out eventually here, I think. Yeah, but uh, he sees the Roaches now. Uh, he, s he saw the Roach War. If he, if he doesn't defend against it, I will be very surprised. We're seeing yeah, a lot sure. of Zerglings in the, coming in the back here. I think one Marine in the bunker will take forever to kill these Roaches though. Yeah, if they, I, I, I'm surprised though. I would expect them to turn into Ravagers and start uh, sieging down the bunker. But instead they I, fall I back. Think, yeah, I think we're seeing the mind games here from the players because they know each other. I think maybe he was expecting the Roaches not to go. Yeah, your man saw the Roach Warren and then seeing it showed the Roaches, but only the Roaches. He didn't turn them into Ravagers and instead he's making lots of speedlings at home. So he's showing Roaches and then attacking with the Zerglings. So now he's going to trick the Hellions into going for the offensive. And let's see if the Zerglings in oh, nine seconds will be able to uh, surround them. All the 
all the humans fed. We really need to keep the fingers crossed here that these Hellions will make it home alive here because the speed is finishing up here and there's a lot of things that can kill. Yes. Okay, now there's certainly some moving out. Will you see it? Oh, 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 oh he turns around. Oh, nice juke nice there. there. Will we see a full wall of at home? We see a second bunker. The Ravagers are now there, so they are there. Oh, there's no. On the right side. As well. No, he does at home. Oh, he's not producing anything out of his factory. He's mass repairing. This is the tournament life on the line. That bunker is going down, and the Hellions are kept out by the Ravagers. Yeah, the Helios are not attacking at all. He closes the wall. Yeah, retreat to look for the high ground is needed here. Giving on repairs in those side of those. Ravager yeah, gets one down. Ravager. But the Ravagers can now start sniping off the Marines on the high ground. So many pieces as it is here. We can lose quite a few and still survive here, but if he loses this high ground, I'm really afraid we are tournament life here. I, 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 I think I think he's <laughs> done it. Yeah. It's the, really harsh here. From, seven from here hours a night. And, and it's that's GG. GG. Wow. Tournament winner Zenit then. Tournament winner Zenit. Wow. Big congratulations. So Definitely. what we're going to do is that we, sh we are now showing you the final score. It's a 4-1 victory to Zenit. Very big congratulations. Uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to go on a very, very short uh, two-minute break and we'll get a winner's interview for you. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a result. Let's start with the second place finisher. Let's give a big round of applause for Joman 
for winning 700 crowns at Enet and the honor of bringing home a trophy to his student division of civil engineering. Congratulations, your man. Wow. And there can only be one true champion, and he showed you all he is no and he's a big force to be reckoned with. We have the champion Seanit. Congratulations! Thank you very much. 1300 crowns richer at Enet and a large, nice, custom made trophy for it to be put in the physics student vision housing. How happy are you right now? Yeah, I'm very happy. Feels great to uh, win, especially against Joman, who I actually know. Yes, uh, in the uh, semi finals interview, you said that. Um, you thought it was going to be a 50-50% of you winning, 50% chance. Do yeah. you think now, after having won 4-1, do you think it was easier than you thought? Um, well, I think the first couple of games went pretty smoothly, but uh, you know, in that long uh, game on Jagannatha, uh, it was pretty hard. Um, so it was about as I expected, I think. How many times on Jagannatha did you feel like, oh no, I'm going to lose this game right now? Uh, well, I think at least two times uh, when I scouted the uh, three racks and uh, like I think when he destroyed my third or something. Um, uh, yeah, it felt very close at times. Yeah. Okay. So that game was very, very close. Do you feel like it was a, a, a close match, so to say, during the other games? Or you, you saw a, a, a proxy there in game number three as well. And then the, the final game, you did the very hard attack. Did you, did you ever feel like there was a risk of you losing a game except for Jagannatha and the one that you actually did lose? Um, well, I, I think I won pretty convincingly on those games. Uh, where I won, except that Jagannath again. Uh, especially, I think that last all in I did was surprising for Joman because I usually do this build and then transition into like two base uh, muta play, but I didn't do that this time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's good. Good to hear. So now that you have 1300 crowns at our lovely sponsor Enet, do you have something in mind for those? Well, I haven't decided on what to use those money money for yet, but you know, AMD has been releasing new, uh, you know, CPUs and GPUs, so maybe I'm taking a look at those. Mm. That's good. It's a good it's a good t- good time to upgrade your computer. Yeah. <laughs> new hardware out there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jock, do you have any uh, more questions about the games? Yeah, if if I could ask, is there is there any specific reason you stayed away from oxide uh, in counter picking? Um well, I think uh, that map especially is uh, kind of um, pretty easy for Terran to uh, deny the third base with a Reaper and uh, an SCV block. But that's why I don't like that map. Yeah, okay. Uh, otherwise, I'm not sure. I think uh, you played great. You mi- mixed up your build orders with uh, some sometimes macros, sometimes roaches. And even coming back in that very hard fought game at Jaganata, so... Uh, very well played today. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Yeah, big congratulations. Um, do you have any final words for your fans or your sponsors? <laughs> I don't have any sponsors, uh, but I guess I'll thank Enet for the prize money. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, well, I don't have much to say. <laughs> Okay. Well, once again, congratulations so much, Sienit, to being the StarCraft II Chalmers champion of 2020. Big round of applause to Sienit once more. Wow. Whoa! Good job. So, Thanks. <laughs> that means that the tournament now has been uh, concluded. It has been two weeks of great StarCraft action, and we have had many players participating in a tournament, many more than what was shown to you today. So we would also like to give a big thank you to all the players, all 16 of them that participated in this tournament. Without you, this tournament would not have been possible. Without players, there's nothing to show. 
thank you so much to all 16 of you. Many of you are probably still watching. I want to give a round of applause for you as well. Big thank you. And another thank you as well is, of course, our sponsors in it for being able to support the uh, prize pool for the tournament. And I'm sure the uh, the finalists will be very happy with their uh, the um, gift cards, so to say. Thank you so much, everyone in the chat as well. Uh, we have had uh, upwards of 50 viewers today. I hope all of you have had a great time and having a, ha also had a great time during these two weeks of following the tournament. Uh, if you want to catch Lagit's next tournament, probably in another game, who knows what it will be, please follow us on Facebook. Okay. Is there anything else, Jock, you want to say before we sign off for today? Mm. No, not particularly. I just want to thank uh, thank Lagit for um, uh, organizing this event. And uh, of course, uh, again, thanks Inet for supporting. Thanks for all the players participating and all the players uh, supporting the players in the chat and so on. Yeah. Great event, I think. I would like to see Lagit do it again if the opportunity comes around. Yes, we'll see. Uh, there's definitely going to be more Shalman Championship Uh Probably not one in StarCraft, and uh, at least not in the super near future, so to say. Okay, so once again, thank you all for listening. We hope you had a great time. This will be the last time you hear my voice. Bye-bye! <laughs>